Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. We are going to now move on you know, and with our study we already saw two equations, two variables, uh, two variables, three equations. We saw that also. Now we are going to see sort of the next, uh, next uh, situation where you have three variables and two equations. And notice how the notation just smoothly handles these situations. You do not have to invent new things here. When I have three variables, I have x1, x2, x3 and the coefficients go very smoothly. No, the first equation is going to be a11, a12, a13 and then b1 on the right hand side. The second equation is going to be a21, a22, a23, b2 on the right hand side. Notice this ij notation and all of this indexing is very powerful. It gives you a very easy way uh, to grow your equations whichever way you want without worrying about notation. You can also conveniently capture it in the 2 by 3 matrix form and then uh, you know put that dotted line and put the right hand side on the other side. It is conveniently capturing what is going on. Okay? So, how do I solve this? How do I proceed with this? Once again our principle is the same. right? So, we have a new situation. Can we use some logic and elimination which is the major basic idea here to get it to an older situation that we know already. Okay, same thing, we can't do anything else other than this. Okay. So, let us try elimination. So, uh, for that we need a non-zero value. right? So, we will once again assume a11 is not 0. Uh, hold on to that thought if you say what to do if a11 is 0, we will come back and address that later. Uh, so, if a11 is not 0, uh, what can we do? The first equation we retain and we do our elimination step for the second equation, right? By now you should know what the elimination step is. I am not going to write it in great detail. Equation 2 is replaced with equation 2 minus a21 by a11 times equation 1, right? So, that is our standard elimination step. It gets rid of x1 and you get this new equation here, okay? This still seems new though, right? I think we have, we have not seen this ready-made before. We have not seen exactly some equation like this before. And uh, you, maybe matrix form will give us a slightly better view. You write the matrix form, uh, the first row remains the same, second row gets replaced by second row minus a21 by a11 into first row. You write that all that down, you get this. But still, we are sort of stuck. How do we proceed now? We do not know, right? So, we have not seen this form uh, explicitly before. And herein comes uh, an important little uh, modification, okay? So, anytime you face a new situation, you have to come up with something slightly clever to see if you can modify it into an old situation, right? So, here also there is one small little step here which we will use to get it to a situation we know already, okay? So, that is what I am going to do now. So, for this, we have this equation. What are we going to do? We are going to treat this x3, I am going to set this x3, the new variable that I have as some u, okay? And basically after that treat it as a constant, okay. I know x3 is a variable, I have to solve for it. But then it is a new situation, I do not know how to handle it. Maybe I will say x3 is some u, right. I mean with some parameter u and let us say I will treat it as a constant. So, when I, what do we mean by treat it as a constant? I will move it to the right hand side, right. So, I will not keep it on the left hand side. If I do that, there is this simple thing that happens, okay. So, what happens when I move that? When I move, I put x3 equals u and then move the x3 term to the right hand side, I get the first equation becomes a11 x1 plus a12 x2 equals not b1 now, some b1 tilde, okay. So, this notation is read as b1 tilde, t-i-l-d-e. So, what is this b1 tilde? It is defined basically as b1 minus a13 u, right. I have taken a13 u and moved it to the other side. So, instead of b1, now I have b1 minus a13 u. I am going to call that as some b1 tilde, just notation, right? So, another notation, uh, simple way to see how it goes. I will do the same thing for the second equation also, x3 is u and move that to the other side. It is some complicated big term, it is moved to the other side, but I just have a b2 tilde, right? So, b2 tilde is this, some other value, b2 minus b1 a, a21 by a11 minus a23 minus a13 a21 by a11 times u, some big value. But does not matter, I am going to treat b1 tilde and b2 tilde as constants, okay. If I do that, what happens? Wonderfully well, now I have a situation here which is two equations, two variables and not only that, it is triangular, okay. So, this is a very, very simple clean idea 
to get over this problem of this additional variable sitting there. When you have an additional variable sitting there, you are not able to proceed. Simply, you know, assign some parameter to it and push it off to the constant side and then go to the familiar world of what you know. Okay, so very simple idea here. And once you have that idea, you see that you go back to this two variables, two equations, triangular form and you know how to solve this, right? So, it is a very simple uh, solution from this point on and we once again succeeded in using this method of using some logical construct, some change in the ideas to get to a situation that we know really, really well, okay. So, you solve x1 and x2 and of course, the answer will be in terms of u, right. If you solve for x1 and x2, I am treating b1 and b2 as constants, but they are really not constants. This u will be floating around. We will keep the u floating around. We will not get rid of the u and let us see what happens uh, finally, right. So, finally, you will express everything in terms of u. We are, we are okay with that, right. So, we, we know this vector form. We can add it up, linear combination. Something will happen and let us see how the answer looks. No, but at least we have a way of solving this three variables, two equation scenario, okay. Once again, let me just quickly summarize what we did here. We first did elimination in the three variables, two equation scenario. We ended up in a stage where we did not exactly have a form like before. There was this additional variable sitting around paining us and what did we do for that? We simply treated that additional variable as a parameter. Once we did that, we could push that additional variable to the other side, treat it as a constant and we are able to go back to this very familiar world of two variables, two equations, triangular, okay. So, it is so these two are sort of important ideas. You, you, when you have an additional variable, you put a parameter there, push it to the constant, you reduce the number of variables and then you can eliminate and go to the triangular situation. That is what I did here, right. So, I did elimination first and then moved to the right. You can also do the other way around. You can treat the third variable as a constant, as a parameter, push it to the right and then you can do elimination. Both are exactly the same, okay. So, once you have this, you know how to do this uh, from this point on. Okay. So, instead of doing this with these all this complicated notation, I am going to show how this works in one example okay. and that should be good enough. You will see there may be other cases will come in uh, that you can see in other problems, maybe in your practice assignments and all that. But I am going to do just one problem to show you how this happens in practice. So, here there are uh, two equations in three variables. Now, notice I am writing x, y, z. There is only three variables here. I do not want to write x1, x2, x3 and all that. I will write x, y, z. But it is the same, right? It does not matter what I call the variable, uh, you know, it is uh, it's okay, right? Okay. So, here is the thing. What do I do first? Uh, first step is to eliminate x. Uh, I got rid of x from the second equation. How do I do that? Equation 2 minus 2 times equation 1. I will get minus y minus 2z equals 1, right? The first equation remains by itself. What is the next step? I am going to treat the z as a parameter. I am going to set z equals u and solve this equation, right. So, move the move the z equals that u, u term to the right side. So, I will get x plus 2y equals 1 minus 3u and minus y equals 1 plus 2u. Now, I can solve this. I know how to solve this. No, this is a triangular form. So, y is already there, right. y is minus 1 minus 2u and then I will plug it back in here, okay. So, if I plug it back in here, uh, there will be one simple simplification here. So, let me just show you how that happens. I uh, can really do that very easily, x plus 2 times. Uh, so, I have to plug this back in here, right, y equals minus 1 minus 2u, okay, 2 times minus 1 minus 2u equals, the right hand side was 1 minus 3u, okay. So, this will be x minus 2 minus 4u equals 1 minus 3u. You take it to the other side, you get x equals 3 plus u. Right, 3 plus 4u minus 3u, it becomes u, okay. So, that is your simplification, very simple simplification. And notice how in a very easy way, x, y and z now are expressed in terms of this common parameter u. u of course, is the same as z, right, z is u. So, you get x, y and z expressed very cleanly in terms of u. Okay, this is what I meant by saying you are going to get, you are going to use the third variable as a parameter and when you solve it using your very well known method, you are going to get everything expressed in terms of u. Now, a form like this, we also know how to write it in vector, vector summation form, right. So, instead of writing it like this, I will say x, y, z solution in this quote unquote vector form 
it's going to be 3 minus 1 0 plus u times 1 minus 2 1. So it's, you see it's the exact same thing as before. Notice y is minus 1 minus 2 u. x is 3 plus u and then z is 0 plus u. Okay. So all the factors of u, all these guys together go here and become this u. Okay. Whatever is left, right, the remaining thing, of course, here it is 0, right, that goes here. Okay, do you see that? I hope you can see that. So, that is how I form this vector form and I get a very convenient expression for how that works. Okay, so this is how you solve three variables, two equations. Okay, you can do an elimination step. Uh, you can also do the other way around, you know, you put z equals u first and then do the elimination. Both are exactly the same. Uh, you won't get uh, in any other way. And then once you do the elimination, you go to this familiar uh, two variable triangular form and that you can readily solve to get all your answers x, y, z in terms of u. And then you can rewrite it if you want in, in this vector form. So, notice again the solution in this three dimensional world. Now, we are not in a two dimensional world again. You have gone to the three dimensional world, you got in three dimensions two equations, two linear equations and the solution ended up being one vector plus a straight line through the origin, right. You see u times 1 minus 2, 1 is actually a straight line through the origin. Think about why that is so. Uh, it's difficult to picture in three dimensions, uh, but still uh, u times that is a straight line through the origin and you get a vector plus the straight line through the origin as your solution for x, y, z. So, it is basically a translated line. Okay, and that is your solution in three dimensions. Okay, so notice how the linear algebraic description is very nice, you know, it gives you a very good handle on what happens here. So, that is uh, two equations, three variables. The next thing we will see is three equations, three variables and that has a lot of other possibilities as well and that we will do in slightly more detail in the next lecture. Thank you very much.